All right, check it out. So I'm out here at our job we did in Downers Grove. This was that project that we did uh, with the sunken patio, the big stack slate walls. Now a lot of this stuff has been shut off for the winter because they still haven't taken occupancy of the house and there was no need to run it all winter. But we did leave the waterfalls run and I let them run for one reason because I really wanted to see what they were gonna look like in the winter. So here's what we got. probably allows you to remember it a little bit better. But here's that big 6,000 gallon harvest system. The reason there's ice over the top of the system is because we had some rain and it filled up. So the water's actually running. What's kind of cool is you can see it running still underneath these steps. It comes underneath all this and then gets down into those tanks. Now I guarantee you this is thick enough. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> I almost got, got wet. There's some ice there. There's no way I'm gonna try to walk across that yet. Maybe I will. Okay, let's try. Oh, yep, it's working. Oh no! <laughs> oh, God. I knew I was gonna get wet and I don't have the shoes uh, to, to fall in right now. And we still have three more ponds to see. But we shut the bog filter one down. That would look really cool with the ice and everything else. But again, nobody's here to see it. Now the whole thing is designed to run all winter long. So when they do take occupancy, they can see how incredible this will look in the winter. We got a little bit of ice forming over in here. This is all still open. That big deep plunge pool right there. It actually goes down about two feet deep right in that space. Oh, here's the real magic. It's these waterfalls. So we get that big horsetail fall right in between there. You can see all the ice. It always forms where there's splash. Water starts splashing, hitting that rock. It builds up, it builds up, it builds up. And what will eventually happen as it gets colder and colder, this is just going to continue to climb, climb, climb. You can see the ice building up on the sides. It'll build up around that way, that way, and eventually it totally encapsulate that whole thing. But that flow of water will never stop. It'll just run right underneath. So you can see actually how it comes out from underneath here. Doesn't stick to the rock, but forms where there's a little bit of splash. And then it just runs underneath. Most of the pond is frozen up over here. There's probably about an inch of ice on top of it in this area. And then it comes out from underneath there and then goes over that fall. And then the big fall, of course, is gonna have some more ice on it. Yeah, look at how cool that looks. And from inside, how amazing is that gonna look when this thing's finished? Oh, check that out. There's, it's really cool because you can actually see some ice from underneath that stone. Now those icicles underneath right there are probably being formed because that stone has kind of this roundish lip and water is rolling along that lip, going back and then dropping again. So they're getting ice kind of building up from the front and the back. And you can see a big hole there. We've got aerators down there keeping a big hole open in this area, and that'll keep all of their fish super healthy all winter long. Now, if this pond kept the power heads on, I guarantee we would have seen a lot more open water back here. But I'm loving the way the ice is forming on this. Pond's staying pretty, <laughs> pretty clear still even with the wet one filter off. These would have looked amazing, I think, running throughout the winter. So there's that one. Um, I think next year we'll definitely leave those walls running. I'd like to leave, I mean, the thing was designed to let the whole thing run all winter long. I'm gonna try to sneak back out here though once we get uh, our first snowfall and really see what that looks like with everything covered in a blanket of snow. It'll look amazing. I'd love to really turn those walls back on too. Should I do it? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna turn the walls back on and then I'll sneak back out here later this winter and uh, see what that looks like running uh, with the ice formed all over those walls because I've never seen it before. All right, let's go check out another pond. All right, guys, I'm out here in Darien, Illinois, and this is a feature we designed, I don't know, it feels like five, six, seven, eight years ago. Time just kind of all blends together, especially when you have a beard. Mm. <laughs> but we built this feature underneath the big clock tower they wanted something that could run all winter and we designed this thing and here it is. It's really cool. So this thing gets unbelievable ice castle formations on it. It's always evolving. The ice looks incredible again at night. I keep saying that. I should really come out here and just take some pictures at night for you guys. But it's really cool. The whole reason this thing can run all winter long is because underneath this area here is about a 6,000 gallon tank. And so no matter how much ice and wind blows through here, 
We've got enough reserved underneath to get it. And you can see how this is already, this one's pretty insulated. That one, the water is really just hugging along the side. So once that ice gets on there, we get less and less splash, but we lose a, quite a bit of water on that first initial freeze before, um, before uh, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's so cold, but what a cool feature. Love it, in fact, What's so funny is I've got a bunch of friends that live in the area and they always ask, hey, do you ever see that water feature out there in Darien? Why don't they shut that thing off? What an epic waste of water that has to be. And it's not wasting water. It's all going back down into that tank. We lose a little bit to form into ice, but that's what makes it so incredible. People think we just have a hose running on this thing all the time and we don't. And what we've done inside of here too, if you can see this, we actually padded the inside with quite a bit of insulation. So we've got a couple layers of insulation on there, insulating this tank that's on the inside here. Wow, this is all ice down and through here. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> ice is slippery. <laughs> oh my God. Caught myself. I'm going to get out of there. Hope you like this one. Let's go check out that project we did in Plainfield. Now we left that whole thing running with the urns and the waterfalls and I can't wait to see what it looks like but here's another view of this one all right last stop and then we'll go swing by my house because because we have to but we're out here at one of my favorite projects from last year yeah it looks pretty cool <laughs> I can't wait to show you this but uh, instead of talking too much somebody said I actually talk too much in my videos less talking more just showing so that's all I'm gonna do on this one here we go. Here's that upper pond. Oh, shh. All right, I can't help. <laughs> I, said, I said I couldn't talk, but I can't help it. So check this out. Huge hole open in this. It is really cold out here. Big open, open space, lots of wind, and uh, the pond is doing great. Huge hole open. This is actually fed by a power head over here there's another power head that's down in there so you got a jet over against the house right in there and then our bog filter actually comes in through there and then this waterfall comes over that way and then look at the ice castle formation forming on these urns over in here oh it's so cool now that one's interesting to me so look at how all of this ice on these urns is all formed but for whatever reason that's staying open right there. Like those are all frozen over. These are all frozen over. Look at all the water just shooting out from underneath there. <laughs> this one's awesome. Cool, I'm glad we stopped by here. Um, again, the whole reason these things are able to run in the winter out here, and the only way we're able to do it is with these rainwater harvesting systems. So if I were to just use a skimmer box on the edge of a pond, it'd be much, much different. But because we've got this big 6,000 gallon tank feeding everything, if I lose 4,000 gallons, even 5,000, even 5,500 gallons of water due to the transformation of ice, I still have 500 gallons of water left to feed the pumps and keep things circulating. So if you want to run a feature in the winter, you almost have to do it that way. Most of our customers have systems with a uh, skimmer box and a biofalls. And the challenge with a skimmer box is if you lose three inches of water in a pond with a skimmer box, your skimmer box will start sucking dry. And then you got to drag a hose out there to fill it up. And so nobody wants to do that. Most people just shut it down. And then when you shut it down, you just got to keep a hole open in the ice. And uh, with those jets, like we've done in some of these other ones, that's how you do it. So the combination of jets and heaters makes it pretty easy. All right, let's go home and I'll show you what's going on with my house and uh, we'll go from there. All right, just got home. So what's kind of cool is I get to show you guys two different features. Now my pond, when I designed my pond, I tried to design it with an enormous amount of circulation, really trying to keep a hole open as big as I possibly could. So I have jets everywhere, which is probably why we don't see a whole lot of ice. So I'm gonna turn this around, show you what's going on. So I don't know if you can see this, but 
but like right there, there's a giant fish cave. And underneath that fish cave, I have an aerator. The air comes up, the air builds up on the bottom of that big giant rock, and then eventually goes boom. And so I get these big giant burping type bubbles that come up here. This keeps a huge hole open in the ice right here. Plus then the aid of the bog filter. Now what's kind of nice about a bog filter or wetland filter is because this hole is about four feet deep, you're moving warmer water. So notice how I don't have any ice build up anywhere around the perimeter of this. It's because I'm moving warmer water than normal. I do have a little bit of ice build up right in there, but the rest of my pond is pretty open. I also have another aerator over there which is really pushing a lot of water. And then I have these jets over here. Now a lot of this freezes up. Last year there was, I think it was last year or the year before, it got to, down to negative 60. The only area that stayed open was right here. And so I have four jets right in here that keep water moving and circulating. So my whole pond froze up to about a section about that big. Everything else iced over. You can see my fish still huddled up like everybody else's down there in the bottom. Got some babies sitting over there. As they come into here, obviously where there's more air and a little bit more wind, I get a little bit more ice. My little tributary fall on the side is almost completely iced up with water moving aggressively underneath it. My big tall fall, it's got some ice where it's just building up on the side right there. And then every other area is just kind of splash and drip, drip, drip. I've got this other fall over here that's almost completely frozen over there, but you can see all that water moving underneath it. A little bit of ice over here where there's almost no circulation, but everything else is wide open. The other reason my pond stays open is again, because I have this giant rainwater harvesting system down here. So with this big system down at the bottom being about seven feet deep, I'm moving pretty warm water down there because I'm grabbing warm water way down below frost lines and pushing it up into my upper pond I get very little ice build up on here now of course when it gets down into the single digits it'll look considerably different now let's go check out that feature in the front yard that we finished up early fall and see how that one's doing so he's still running things are going pretty good totally different ice formation it's actually kind of cool it's almost creating a bowl so you get the water dripping down this then coming down and then because of the weird splash it kind of creates this bowl almost so the ice started building up from here climbing 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 all the way up and around and it's just building up higher and higher so eventually i can only imagine that this thing by the end of the winter or midwinter the ice will be up twice as high you see the bowl is totally staying open and then just where it dumps out goes down into that little thing and then i've got some ice build up in other areas so i will come out here and show you what this looks like tonight just so you can kind of see what these things look like at night because it does look cool with the ice all right guys i'm back outside it's a little later it's definitely dark outside but the coolest part is all this conversation we had today about i can't wait to show you what this is going to look like if it snows look what it's doing huh yep for everybody that doesn't live in the Midwest or up north, this is what snow looks like after about 30 minutes. So the cars are covered, evergreens start grabbing some of that snow, it starts hanging on, it looks really cool. And then check out that water feature. That light comes up through the snow. See how awesome that looks at night? Suck it, California. You'll never get this. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, I'm jealous. I do not like the winter, but I think snow is pretty awesome. Hey, glad this happened. Hmm? Hmm? High five. <laughs>